welcome to Mobility Mastery Monday. I'm Alicia and this is your weekly source for the best tips and tools for pain relief and feeling unstoppable. And today I want to show you my favorite way to stretch. As most of you probably know, I'm not a fan of static stretching, which is when you go into a stretch and you hold it um, in place, hence the word static. Um, this is my favorite way to stretch. It's called PNF stretching or proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. <laughs> Big fancy word there. Um, and it basically means that we're going to recruit uh, muscle fibers and proprioceptors and everything uh, involving muscle contraction to actually create a better stretch that doesn't uh, maybe lead to more being more prone to injury through something like static stretching. So if you're static stretching and you're really tight and you're cranking down on that stretch, you can actually create a stretch reflex. Um, if those fibers don't want to be forced to lengthen that way. So PNF stretching uh, actually allows the muscle fibers to fatigue and relax and not resist the stretch. So you can usually get a way better stretch without injuring yourself. So the basic idea behind a PNF stretch, I'm gonna give you this first because you can apply it to any muscle in your body. Um, and I'm gonna go through Kind of a basic PNF stretch routine that I might use. I think we're going to target maybe um, uh, four or five muscle groups. Um, but you can use this uh, method basically to target anything. So the idea is basically to start moving into a stretch, like a, st a static stretch, and then use the contraction of the muscle you're attempting to stretch um, in a three second contraction, and then relax and come out of it and then go into it again, and usually you can go further at this point, and then you'll do that again, and come out of it. And I like to do it three times, and then on the last one, we'll hold the stretch. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like, but the reason I wanted to explain it is because you can't actually see me <laughs> uh, contracting the muscle because it's a very static contraction. Uh, now, when you go into pushing against the stretch, Make sure you're not using a lot of muscle force. Um, you really only need to engage the muscle maybe 10%. So it's really kind of a gentle push. Um, do not try to muscle your way into it. Um, that'll be a little bit too aggressive. So every time you're pushing against the stretch, just make sure it's pretty darn gentle. First, we're gonna target um, the hamstrings. This is a common one that a lot of people wanna stretch. Uh, so basically, you're gonna wanna find something like this block here, or you could use a bench or um, a chair, really anything. And you're gonna put your leg up there. I like to draw the foot into a dorsiflexion or toes towards your shin. It'll just lengthen everything that much more. And then you really wanna bend at the waist on this one, not try to like go further by cocking that other hip out to the side. And actually it doesn't take much when you do it right. Um, so that's starting to feel like a good stretch. Now I don't want to force it and go further, but now I'm going to contract my hamstring by pushing my heel into the, uh, the block here, the bench. So three seconds of pushing, and then I'm gonna relax and come out of it, and then go further this time. So it took that maybe a couple more inches um, to get the same feeling of stretch. So then I'm gonna push again, and then come out and do it one more time, and then come out. And then on the last one, you can just hold it. And you might wanna hold it for 20 to 30 seconds, depending on your goal. Um, if flexibility and really gaining increases isn't your goal, then you don't need to hold it that long. But if you're trying to gain a lot of flexibility, you might wanna hold it longer, and then come out of it, and that's a basic stretch for a PNF stretch for the hamstring. Uh, so now I'm going to show you how to do the same thing for your quadriceps, which are here. Um, in my opinion, this is a much more productive one to do than the hamstrings because most of us actually don't have super tight hamstrings, we have super tight quads. Um, so I definitely could benefit from this one and I usually try to do it before every workout. So the idea is to put, you know, again, the quad into a stretch. And this would be a common static stretch for the quad anyway. Um, but then I'm gonna push backwards into my hand. You won't see it because I'm pushing down and my hand is going to resist. Uh, so pushing for three seconds and then let it go. 
Do it again. And now I can go a little bit further into that stretch. And I'm gonna push for three seconds. Let it go. Do it again. And you might see how I'm really pulling it back. I need to do that to get a better stretch. You might not need to, but I really wanna target the quad hip flexors as well. So pushing last time, letting it go. And that one really got into my hip flexors. And then on the last one, I'm just gonna hold it. Again, for 20 to 30 seconds, depending on your goal, should be plenty. And that's how you do the piano stretch for the quads. And of course, do the other one. And now I'm gonna show you a piano stretch for the calf. Most of you probably know this one. Um, I know a lot of people try to use it. You wanna find something that you can prop your foot up onto, and then you're gonna step into or lean into the stretch. And then the movement on this one is going to be pushing my toes and my foot into the bench um, as if I was trying to contract the calf or the gastrocnemius muscles there. Um, so leaning into it, and I'm going to push for three seconds and then come out. And then see if I can go a little further, push for three seconds and come out. Last time, coming out of it, and then once again, you would hold it for 20 to 30 seconds, um, really however long you want. But it usually feels pretty good by this point. Um, it doesn't feel like a strain on the muscle fibers. And I have really tight calves, so that feels pretty good. And my main pick for an upper body PNF stretch is going to be getting the chest and the biceps at the same time. And if you watched my pec uh, release and deltoid release video, then you probably already learned this one, but I'm gonna show you again. Um, you want 45 degrees. If you go here, uh, you're basically only going to target the biceps. Um, and pec minor is one of the things that gets super tight on all of us from looking down all day and being on our phones and being on the computers. So that's definitely one you want to target. Pretty much all of us can benefit from this stretch. Um, so again, 45 degrees. Uh, now I'm going to start walking away from the pole, not away from the pole, turning the opposite direction of my arm but I'm not gonna walk away because then my arm lowers and then again, we're just in that uh, bicep tissue, not the pecs. So I'm gonna walk away and I am hypermobile. <laughs> so I can probably go further than most people. So don't try to go as far as me necessarily right here, but, um, but you wanna take it into what feels like a really good stretch. Um, and for me, that's pretty good right there. And then I'm going to push into the pole, into my palm um, for three seconds. And then I'm going to come out, let it relax for a second, and then go further. And then I'm going to push, come out of it. I'm going to make sure I'm still at 45 degrees. Go into the last one, push for three seconds, and come out. And then again on the last one, you would just hold it. That feels so good. <laughs> uh, 20 to 30 seconds again. Or if you want to hang out longer, go for it. But I can feel that stretch right here really well in my pec minor. Um, if you don't feel this here, um, it's maybe your arm is bent because as soon as I bend my elbow there, I'm not feeling it in the pec minor. So if you're not feeling it here, make an adjustment um, and try to get it to where you feel it here because that's the most impart important part of this particular stretch. Ah, it feels so good. Um, and that's how you stretch the chest and the biceps using a PNF stretch. So that's a basic PNF stretching routine that I like, but again, you can apply the principles to anything, you know, if you want to stretch your forearms, um, you know, I don't know if there are other things, but those are the major muscle groups. But again, you can use that principle for pretty much anything. And that's my preferred way of stretching versus static stretching. And if you like this post, then like and share it. And for the full blog post, click the link below. And I will see you next time on Mobility Mastery Monday.